we're the directors, I'm Ed. I'm Will. And we're Sumo Science. And we're shooting the world's largest stop motion animation on a Nokia N8. My name is Toby Howell and I'm the director of photography. And I'm shooting on Nokia N8 and I've got three of them. Up that crane. So after shooting the world's smallest stop motion film, our brief was to shoot the world's largest stop motion film. So the story is man catches fish, man becomes bait for bigger fish, man gets swallowed by bigger fish, man accidentally sets off chain reaction and gets spat out of bigger fish. Hello, I'm Jamie Wardley and I'm the principal sand artist. So we've got uh, various different elements in the, um, in the sand drawing, which is like uh, the cloud and the seagulls and they're using stencils piece of plastic comes on that's got the shape of a bird in it and they rake around it a little bit and then they lift the stencil up and you've got like a perfect bird and then with the C there's like the center line it's got two lines either side of it and then we literally just draw in between but for every frame the C has to move so we rub out the line then we redraw it Hi there, uh, I'm Todd, I'm the pixelation artist uh, in this I play the fisherman The pixelation artist is a human puppet essentially uh, we could have used a puppet inside our costume, but it's much easier having naturalistic human joints and we just get in there and basically move them as if they're a puppet. So over the course of the next 16 hours, we'll do about 20 seconds of actual screen time. Uh, with all these bodies here all scurrying around, the time-lapse cameras will show this amazingly as the whole thing develops. It's like a sort of amoeba that stretches and closes, and each time it moves away, just a little bit has changed. <laughs> because we're shooting animation, we're not shooting uh, using the video functions on the phone. This is a, a sequential series of high quality JPEGs that I'm getting off the N8. We can, we can deliver beyond HD from those stills. And obviously put them together in a line and play it back at 25 frames per second and you, and you get the illusion of movement. My name's Merlin and uh, I'm animating The Fisherman. Normally I'm the creative director of Wallace and Gromit at Ardman. It, you know, after years of animating in the, in the dark studio, the chance to come out and, and try and do something out in the open, it was just something I couldn't say no to. It's the first job that we've had that you know we've had such a huge team on. Usually it's me and Will in the studio in a tiny unit where we're kind of just, you know, it's just us, we control everything. My job has been to make it happen. <laughs> we're obviously used to shooting indoors in a dark studio for three weeks, so to shoot for five days on a beach is completely different and needs a complete rethink for kit and crew. If someone said you come and do animation outside, you're going to be stupid. But I think that's a wonderful thing about this, is that we're attempting something that shouldn't really be possible. This here is a very dangerous place to be because we're actually in the teeth of the monster. And so uh, the monster has just come up, swallowed the boat and the teeth have come round it. So the darker areas here are where the, um, the gaps in between the teeth are, and then the lighter areas are where the teeth are as well. But just to give it a little bit of shading, We've got this kind of like light raking on the, on the left side. We've just got it, as you can see, we've just got the shot just before the sea came in. I'm Egg and I'm camera assistant, or phone assistant in this case. Uh, we've got three phones rigged up in a cherry picker behind us and I'm controlling them down the van and capturing the images. I'm using a Bluetooth keyboard to control the camera. I've also got a video feed to three monitors here, one for each camera so I can view what I'm shooting and what they're looking at. We were lucky enough to get a selection of some great animation graduates from across the country came down to help us out and they've done some fantastic stuff. I think they've got some great experience being on the shoot. Yeah. You know, we couldn't have done it without them so you know our thanks really goes out to those guys. Mm. So tonight is the internal shot where our fishermen get swallowed by the monster so we're basically lighting him from a whole series of lights suspended by cranes. Uh, creating the kind of internal space inside the summer. But yeah, the sand drawing, doing it at night, it's uh, something else. It's very, it's more difficult in many ways in that you can't really see things. But then lighting it, being able to control light is actually quite nice as well. It's 2.40 in the morning and we've shot 33 frames and we've got 17 to go.
Uh, so some hours later than I last spoke to you, the darkness settled over the land and now the light is coming. Over there, the sun is rising, the moon's gone to bed, and very soon I'm going to be going to bed. But, but, we did it! <laughs> Hooray! The fisherman has been blown out, and finally, I'm back to me.